Hey everyone, it's Mr. Bebe, and this video is on evidence of evolution. So let's get right into it with our first key concept. Evidence of common ancestry among species comes from many different sources, and we're going to examine some of those sources in this lesson. So first let's talk about common descent. What does that mean? That is the theory that all living things descended from a common ancestor. And we only uh, can theorize this because we have seen some evidence to show that. So first thing we have evidence-wise is the fossil record. So this is a record of an organism on Earth that has been preserved in rock. So usually the bones uh, that actually get preserved in rock uh, over time. Now if you look at um, how organisms are preserved, uh, they are preserved uh, with the oldest organisms on the very bottom and the youngest ones on top. That's in terms of if you're digging a hole, the further down you dig, the older the organism is. So you can actually see as you go from top to bottom through the strata or the layers, uh, you can see how the organisms have changed over time and unlock the mysteries of what that common ancestor might have looked like. Now, the way this looks in uh, a sort of creature that you understand today, uh, a, a modern whale uh, at the very top there, we actually can use the fossil record to show that that whale descended from an ancestor that actually walked on land over 50 million years ago. And the way that scientists look at that is they go, okay, well, let's look at the, the skeleton, the fossils that we see. And you go through the different ancestors and you actually end up seeing some what are called vestigial structures. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. But these are structures that are left over from a common ancestor that really have no purpose for the current organism. So that early modern whale at the very top has something left over in its fossils that wasn't really necessary for that creature, but is left over because it came from a different um, creature, an ancestor, for uh, millions of years ago. Next thing we'll talk about here is biogeography. So that's the study of the distribution of species in a geographical area over a certain period of time, and it shows how organisms could have spread from one area to another. Now, when you think about this, when all the land masses were together in the Pangaea form, you uh, had organisms that could move in and around different areas uh, as they pleased, and then slowly continental drift started happening, and then you see that um, they become geographically isolated, climates start changing, and so these the, the common ancestor actually starts breaking off and adapting to its new environment, so they end up over millions of years looking quite different from their common ancestor because they're in different environments. So you can see the example here, the armadillo, the pangolin, the anteater, uh, from South America and from the Oceania region, they all came from a common ancestor, but because of where they were in the climate over millions of years, they evolved into what you see today. So now let's look at uh, homology. So what is homology? That's when uh, something, uh, a species have something in common. So homo means same. So what we're going to discuss here is we're going to talk about molecular, anatomical, and developmental uh, homologies and how they support this common ancestry theory that we work with here in evolution. So first, molecular homologies. That is, all living things have the same types of molecules that are necessary for life. So all living things have DNA, they have RNA, they have proteins made of amino acids. So as you remember, DNA is transcribed into uh, RNA, which is then translated into proteins. So all living things share that same characteristic. So we have the, that sort of similar structure there. So the more similar the DNA or the RNA or the amino acid sequence, the more recent the ancestor was. So uh, if you look at the percent of amino acids that are identical to uh, the human hemoglobin polypeptide here, so obviously 100% for humans, the rhesus monkey shares about 95% of the amino acids in their uh, hemoglobin, and you go all the way down to a lamprey, which only shares about 14%. So that higher that percentage is, the closer it is to the common ancestor of the two. So the rhesus monkey and the human share a much more recent common ancestor than do the human and say the frog in this case. So human chromosomes here are shown on the left and a chimpanzee chromosome are shown on the right. Uh, both humans and chimpanzees have 23 pairs of chromosomes and you have them lined up next to each other and showing the different bands where different genes are located. Now you notice they're very similar but they're not exactly the same but similar enough to make you think, well, maybe there was a common ancestor there. So that is something that uh, scientists will look at as well. So let's move on to anatomical homologies. So some living things have uh, similar body structures, 
uh, similar bone structures or muscle structures uh, that make us think they came from a common ancestor. So let's start by talking about one of those, which is homologous structures. This is very important. So you've got, these are same structure, but they have a different function. So for example, a human arm, a dolphin's flipper, a cat's leg, and a bat's wing all share a common bone structure, same structure, but they have very different functions. Um, whales, uh, the structure helps them swim, uh, bats helps them fly, and humans and cats help them grab things or walk, basically. But this is evidence of a common ancestry because that structure is so similar. So remember, homologous structure, same structure, different function. And going back to vestigial structures, which we talked about with the whale before, that's a structure that an organism has but doesn't need or use anymore. Um, they have these structures still because it was part of a common ancestor, uh, and that common ancestor maybe found it useful, and it just hasn't quite gone away yet. So uh, something that humans have that are vestigial structures, we have wisdom teeth um, that very few people actually have room in their mouths for. Uh, the appendix, uh, which a lot of people have removed it's, it, it, when it gets inflamed, it really does not, doesn't do a whole lot for you. And also there's a tailbone. So there's a remnant of an actual tail maybe, uh, in, in humans, it doesn't really serve any purpose to have that very, very tip tailbone uh, in humans. So maybe evidence of a common ancestry with another organism that had a tail. So now we go to analogous structures. Now these are the opposite of homologous structures. That's when the structures are different, but they have the same function. Okay, opposite of homologous structures. So we look at different wings. So the wings of a butterfly versus the wings of a bat versus the wings of a bird. Now, if we looked at all of these, the structures are very different, but they all help that organism fly. So I want you to remember, analogous structures are different structure, same function, opposite of homologous structure. So last, we're gonna talk about developmental homologies. Uh, so different organisms are gonna develop in similar ways. And uh, the more similar they are in their development, the closer they are uh, common ancestor-wise. So different organisms look similar and have similar structures very early in the stages of development. Look at this picture on the right here, and you've got um, four different emb embryos. You've got a fish embryo, a reptile embryo, a bird, and a human embryo. And look how similar they look. There's gill slits in all of them, even though we know birds and humans do not have gills. Uh, and most reptiles do not, uh, but look, they all have tails in a certain way. The heads kind of look similar. So this is something when you look at all these different ones that you, uh, gives you evidence of a common ancestry. The more similar the development is, the more recent the common ancestor is. So if you look um, maybe at, uh, you know, chick and tortoise right there, look how similar those look. That means that their common ancestor uh, is a lot more recent than say a fish and a human.